Hi guys, Jim here from drtankenstein.com. So we've got an experimental video today. I always leave a bit of room in my grist for a grain that's gonna specifically promote head retention. Now I asked about on Twitter to see what adjuncts everybody used for this and it seems like everyone's got their own signature preference almost. So I thought I'd compile the most popular ones, put them together, pit them against each other, find out which is best. Enjoy. I'm going to run you through how this experiment's going to go. So in each of these little pots, I've got sort of mini grists. Now they're all 95% Marisotta with 5% of an adjunct grain. Now these adjunct grains are ones that people would typically add to improve the head of their beer. The first is carapils. Now, I first came across carapils very early on in my brewing career, so for me, it's kind of just always been the, always been the grain I go to to add to improve head retention. It's kind of a, I think it is a caramel malt. Um, it's kind of trademarked, uh, so it's sort of been uh, an outstander for, for a long time. The second is torrified wheat. Um, you can't really see it because it's all mixed up. So torrified wheat is wheat that's been sort of popped. So it's not malted, but it's not raw either. So you don't need to, to cook it. So no diastatic power, no enzymes in there, but it does still have all the starches and proteins that you would associate with a wheat. Uh, the last one is oats. Now oats are just a typical high protein grain. They're so high in protein that Scottish people eat them. And I literally just bought these from the supermarket. These are just rolled oats that you can get in the supermarket. So out of the three, this one by far is the cheapest. Now the way it's gonna go is I'm gonna set up a water bath in this sort of polystyrene container. It's gonna be at mash temperature. And I'm just gonna regulate that by adding hot water, taking out the cold stuff, adding hot water for an hour. When that's done, when the grains have been sitting in there with obviously water on them for, for an hour, I'm gonna filter the grain off and boil in the microwave. The volumes will be topped up to this 300 mil mark throughout the, throughout the experiment. And once they're boiled, I'll cool them down as you would a regular, a regular mash uh, wort and I'll ferment them. I wasn't gonna ferment them, I was gonna do, run this experiment dry uh, straight away without fermentation, but I've been reading a lot about biotransformations and uh, protein hydrolysis during, during fermentation. So I figured to keep it simple, I would use 5% adjunct, as you may normally do, and ferment. I'm gonna let it ferment completely dry, so I'm just gonna leave it for two weeks and see how it looks. So, I've got my water. See you in two weeks. I guess uh, through the magic of television, you won't even feel it. My samples are all fermented out. Starting gravity, finishing gravity of each was roughly the same, so they're all fairly similarly attenuated. So this is a, an experiment about head retention. So these are fermented, but not carbonated. So I need to promote some head formation in there. The way I'm gonna do that is with this. Just gonna literally submerge it and give each one of them a little whisk. Now I know that I'm gonna be putting air in there and not carbon dioxide like you would have in a, in a regular beer but I think as long as I treat them all similarly as long as they all have air bubbles and not carbon dioxide bubbles then the experiment's still valid. This is head retention so I'm gonna give them a whisk and just see how long the head lasts. So let's go. The blender's just introducing some air into the samples. Now, obviously, normally this would be carbon dioxide from the carbonation that you've that you've done to the beer, but I didn't do that, so there's there's none of that light around. Uh, so while the video is sped up, so it's five minutes in now, and carapils, the foam on the carapils samples died, which is quite a big surprise, really, considering that's that's the go-to. 
Now, the other two samples, Torrified Wheat and Roll, those seem to be surviving. Um, as you, when you first introduced foam, you see what what what's referred to as a wet foam, uh, which which as the bubbles get smaller and, and collapse and get more closely packed, you get what I guess you would refer to as a dry foam, uh, which would be a more creamy foam. So after 12 and a half minutes, the Torrified Wheat sample has died, which you know, compared to Carapils, that's pretty decent actually. Uh, rolled oats is still going. We'll probably stop filming, but we'll keep monitoring it and let you know how long it lasts. Wow, well, so yeah, there it is. You know, my uh, my king of foam Carapils turned out a bit rubbish and, you know, oats took it by a mile. It's still going in there at least eight times as long as the Carapils. So, that was promising for, for oats, but this wouldn't be a complete experiment unless we added a couple more samples to it. So I've got I've got three more. The first is a control sample. So screen left is just a hundred percent Maris Otter, nothing else. The one screen right is a sample with ninety five percent Maris Otter as previously, with five percent malted wheat. Now we saw torrified wheat in the first experiment. But I just wanted to see what effect malting the wheat had on this. Now, a couple of people also mentioned they had malted wheat specifically to aid head retention, so it's in there. The middle sample, however, is an interesting one. All the previous samples have been unhopped, so just grains, mashed, boiled, filtered, fermented. The middle sample, however, I've hopped to a, a BU GU ratio of one. So added a certain amount of New Zealand bullet hops to give this a bit of bitterness. Now, if you've read about head retention, you may or may not know that the alpha acids from hops definitely aid in head retention. They're part of the, the foam complex. So screen left, 100% Marisotta. Middle, 100% Marisotta with hops. Screen right, 95% Marisotta plus 5% malted wheat. Let's give it a whirl. So I'll just repeat here that the first two samples, left and center, the grain bill and the process on those has been exactly the same. It's just that the center one has had hops added to the boil, uh, whereas the first one didn't. Uh, now, strangely, it seems like Control's actually doing much, much better than anticipated. It's actually already beaten Carapils uh, at 10 minutes. It, it, it's just, just dying now. Uh, the other two, hops and malted wheat, seem to be doing quite well. Now, as I said earlier, when, when you introduce air into a beer sample, or carbon dioxide, in fact, uh, that's trapped by a protein matrix. But something that gets a little bit less sort of press is the fact that the isoalpha acids from, from hops also contribute to this. As you can see, you know, the, that exact identical grain bill in the, in the first and the second sample, but the, the one that's been hopped is, is lasting far and away longer than the first one. Uh, you may notice that the, the hop sample is a little bit hazier. Um, that's just something that you couldn't get rid of. That's just insoluble uh, polyphenols from the hops there. We can kind of see a little bit of beer poking through the, the foam now. It, this is this is coming up to 30 minutes. Uh, remember, this, the, the video is, is sped up. So by and large, it seems like hops, malted wheat and oats are, have all sort of survived around us a similar time. Oats lasted 40 minutes. And that's about where we are with these samples now. Wow, so again, some pretty pretty shocking results really. Uh, you know, my my one and only carapils at the beginning there is done actually worse than the control somehow. Uh, I have got a couple of thoughts as to why that might be. I'm, I'm gonna write all this up in a, in a blog post, but for now, I guess the takeaways of, of this experiment are, yeah, you know, adjuncts can improve head retention compared to just a base malt. Uh, in this, we saw that oats and malted wheat performed quite well, you know, the, the, the best out over the other adjuncts. But the biggest, the biggest variable I think that we can pull out of, of this particular experiment is that hops improve your head retention massively. If you compare the 200% Maris Otto, at mashes, the hopped one lasted far and away longer than the, than the unhopped one. So 
Maybe in future I'll do a further experiment with hop rates, maybe dry hops versus boil hops. Uh, you know, there, there are a hundred different ways you can go with this, but for now, I think hops are the kings of foam. Thanks for watching. So there it is. Interesting stuff, I thought. You know, my, my old favourite uh, turned out to be a bit rubbish, really. And, uh, you know, hops. I, I think that's really the, the, the biggest thing to take away from this is that hops really, really promote head retention. And it's not really something we ever talk about. Now, it, I guess you don't really need to worry about that because you, you're putting hops in anyway. But another thing, uh, like an, an interesting thing that you might want to think about is that getting having good head and good head retention isn't just about adding foam positives it's also about not adding foam negatives so there are certain grains which as well as promoting head retention such as carapils might actually have other compounds in there which actually decrease the head and i think that's what's going on there anyway look out for the write-up head over to drtangenstein.com see the blog Follow me on Twitter at Dr. Tankenstein and subscribe to the channel below as well. Thanks for watching.